Okay, we're gonna go ahead and get started for you guys. Um, the best way for me to show you how to use this CRM is to use the training video that they already have set up. It's the 35 minute video. Um, it uh, is pretty simple CRM, very basic. Um, one thing that they did say is if somebody is on RAIM MLS's search engine, searching listings, in order to capture that person's information, you will need to be, you will need to go ahead and have this set up. Now, this doesn't have to be in your main CRM to use if you don't want it to, but at the same time, if you have a great listing and people are searching it through Rain's website, that's the way to capture their lead. So I definitely advise everybody to go ahead and get set up for this. Um, there is a way to go ahead and like this is an app, so you can do the Rain MLS app. There will be two apps. One of them will have uh, an orange bar on them. One of them will not. So you want the one that doesn't have the orange bar um, for the app. And then you can also do it from your desktop. And then you'll just, your login name will be your Rain login name. And then you'll just need to reset your password. So just hit the reset password button. They'll send you an email um, to go ahead and get you started on that. So without further ado, let me go ahead and click play and we'll work through this. And if you guys have any questions, just put them in the chat box and I'll make sure to address them at the end. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. My name is Tiffany Thompson. I'm the Director of Marketing here at RAIN, and we are so excited to bring you a look at our new product, RAIN MLS Agent CRM. This is a dual desktop mobile CRM that you can use to manage your RAIN.com contacts as well as other lead sources. We have with us today Charlie Nettle and Lauren Sove. They are from Tra uh, Constellation One, and they are they have been guiding us through this process. They're part of the implementation team, implementation and training over at Constellation One, and they are going to be showing us this new product. Please keep in mind that this is an overview. We will be providing in-depth, step-by-step training once the app launches. So without further ado, I will turn it over to Charlie Nettle and uh, we will get started. Perfect, all right, Tiffany, thank you very much. And uh, so, yeah, as she said, my name is Charlie and Constellation One. And so we wanted to kind of give you an overview of the new website uh, and the CRM. There's uh, actually a desktop version of the CRM and a mobile app. They work together, they're uh, companion uh, uh, productivity tools to help you receive uh, contact and be able to manage and follow up with your leads and, and clients when they come into uh, in, into the system here. So um, essentially what's going to happen is when anybody inquires on one of your listings, you'll get a, a lead notification and uh, that lead will then be assigned over to you. And we'll take a look at what that uh, follow-up workflow looks like and what features are available in the CRM as well. So what we're looking at here is what's going to be the new RainMLS.com uh, or the Rain.com uh, website. Have uh, you know property search tools and other information available here, but essentially what I'd like to point out is that if we scroll all the way down to the bottom of the page into the footer section, there'll be a link down here called Rain MLS Agent. And you can click on this to get to your desktop version of the CRM. So I've gone ahead and I've done that and I'm already logged in. So uh, it has brought me to my dashboard. Just a quick overview of what the dashboard looks like here on the desktop version is, uh, you know, high level information for lead activity. I, uh, in other words, where are leads coming from? Uh, you know, are they registering? Are they, you know, clicking on properties? Are they, you know, contact forms? Uh, you also have access to uh, tasks, your activity snapshot here on the right. So you can see any tasks that you have available or appointments. So I can click on the different tabs here and I can see that I don't have any events, but I have a couple of tasks that are due. Uh, actually, it looks like they're overdue. That's why the date is showing in red here, but I can click on the name to access what this task is. 
and it's a to do. I'm supposed to meet with John and Mary, and it looks like it's a listing appointment. So I can go ahead and, and get that kind of a reminder here. All of this does sync with the mobile CRM app too. So you can get a lot of this information on your phone as well. So once, uh, once you get it downloaded and installed uh, and logged in, you'll be able to access a lot of this information there as well. Um, and again, that's not quite uh, available just yet, but those will be available soon. And again, we'll, we'll communicate when, when and where and how to get all of that stuff onto your phone. Um, and then also there's calendaring, uh, you know, new leads that have shown up here in the system and so forth. So again, just high level information here on the dashboard uh, as far as leads, clients, communications, any drip marketing campaigns and things like that that might be in progress as well. So uh, a lot of good high level information here on the dashboard. Uh, when you do get logged in uh, to the CRM, you'll find your contacts in this section here under contacts. I'm going to click on that, and there's a handful of options here. We're going to start with the first one called contacts, and this will bring you to you what we call, of course, the contacts dashboard. So these are uh, uh, leads that you have in the system, and get uh, again, you can see their name, phone number, email address. Uh, and some other information here, you know, their last action and activity and things like that. We can click on their name. Let's find a good one here. Let's come down here to our friend Mary and get into the details of this particular person. So again, in the top, we have their name, phone number, email address for easy, quick reference. We have a status, which can be set uh, manually here. So we can set these to either hot, warm, or closed, uh, depending on the type of status that this person is. And we can see that they're a lead and they're pre-qualified um, and so forth. We also provide a contact score. So depending on how active the person is on the website, in other words, are they saving properties? Are they looking at a lot of different properties? And uh, if they're active on the website, they'll get a higher score here. And so we do provide some feedback on, uh, on how hot a person potentially is, or at least at the moment. As we scroll down the page here, we're, you'll see that we're on our details page here. And let's start at the top of the left column here. So we can see our to-dos module. So uh, to-dos can be created simply by clicking on the to-dos. And uh, you can go ahead and add in, whether it's a meeting or a follow-up, send a CMA or, or another type of follow-up. Give it a subject line and, and notes and so forth and go ahead and save that off. I'm not going to do that right now. But uh, again, it will then add in a to-do that will show on your calendar, it will show on the mobile app as well. So you can kind of keep track of, of uh, you know, uh, things that you need to do uh, along the way here. Contact details. So of course, you, these are the details, the phone numbers, email addresses. You can click the pencil icon here to edit or change any of this. If this person uh, uh, has a spouse or working with a business partner or something like that, you can go ahead and add in additional contacts to this record and uh, keep them in the loop as well. Personal details uh, are specific to things like the contact's birthday, they have a home anniversary, nickname, employer, things like that. So a little bit more details if you wanna keep track of those kinds of things with your leads and clients. And scroll back to the top here, and let's take a look at the right-hand column here. So a customer profile, uh, essentially, basically when you receive a lead in the lead follow-up workflow on the mobile app, Excuse me, they'll, there's a process where you can uh, create a profile for your, for your lead. You know, are they buying? Are they selling? If they're buying, where's their area of interest? What's their price range? Any contingencies and things like that. We'll take a look at that in detail here in just a moment. But essentially, this puts that information right here at your fingertips. We can see that they were pre-qualified here uh, for $5,000, but we can also see that information up here at the top of the page as well. Scrolling down a little bit farther here, we have contact notes. So of course you can maintain notes by adding in your own notes, clicking on the add notes here uh, to kind of keep track of, of any information that uh, you've discussed with them. If they have submitted a form on the website and they've added a note to that form, that will also show here in this contact notes section here. Uh, notes are sorted just so you know, from the newest or at the top, the oldest are, are then down at the bottom. So the newest notes will show here at the top. We also provide what we call a recent activity or a 30 day look back as to what's going on with this person. So we can see that 
Uh, they have an action plan associated. They actually have three action plans associated here. Action plans are our drip marketing campaign system. So um, uh, anytime I say action plan or activity, I'm really referring to our drip marketing campaign. So we have various drip marketing campaigns that can be made available uh, that you can then automatically associate to your leads and clients and, and uh uh, they can begin receiving those messages automatically. All those messages are branded to you, the sender, the agent who is sending them, and, and with your contact information and so forth, all in those messages. Uh, so in this case, there's also a, a to-do. So there's a follow-up. This is that showing or that the test that I just showed you earlier. So we can see to-dos and, uh, and so forth. So kind of gives you an idea of what's going on. These links are clickable so that you can see the action plan or you can see the to-do um, uh, action item here as well. Scrolling down a little bit farther, so we have groups. Uh, again, managing groups is, is a, a kind of a handy tool for putting people into buckets, whether they're buyers, sellers, investors, what have you. Uh, you can add in your own personal groups by clicking on the group plus button here and create your own uh, personal groups that you can then uh, manage people with. Uh, otherwise, they'll land in like a, a lead or a buyer's group or something like that. I can click on the pencil icon, or you will be able to, and that way we can see all of the groups that are available here. And we can see that I have a test group in here. This is one that I created for my account, but I can go through and I can check or uncheck. So this might be actually be a buyer, buyer, investor, and I can check or uncheck the group associations here and then click on save. And that will then update the group assignments for this particular leader client. So you can create your own custom groups as well as reassociate people to different groups, uh, depending on how you need to do that. And then at the bottom here, we have action plans, again, drip marketing campaigns. Uh, and these are uh, a couple of the campaigns that are associated to this particular lead that we're looking at, because we're looking at this lead uh, detail page here. If I wanted to add in an additional drip marketing plan or drip marketing campaign, I can click on the uh, add plan. I can select the plan, and then I can see that the you know the date. I can see the different messages of when you know the names of these messages, as well as I can see the uh, the scheduling for these messages. So in this case, this is going to go out every thirty days. The first message goes out right away, and it's a zero day offset. And then uh, subsequent messages will go out every thirty days uh, on this schedule. So if I save it, that's going to go ahead and then begin sending this uh, drip marketing campaign to to this person. It's going to cancel out of that. All right. Uh, all right, let's jump back over here to the uh, top of the page. I'm going to go back to the uh, left navigation where the contacts are, and let's take a look at groups here, because there's a couple different ways that we can manage groups or that you can manage groups in the system. Uh, I'm going to come down here. We see our list of groups uh, in this column here. And if I scroll down, let's see, I've got... There we go. I've got my leads group. Looks like there's 15 people in there and I can click on that and I can see those 15 people here. I can use this page the same way I was using the contacts page we were just looking at. So in other words, I can click on the person's name and get into their details uh, of their account and so forth. Again, I get the similar information here with their name, contact information. Uh, and other details here from the groups module. But one of the powerful tools here with the group modules is you can automate the drip marketing campaigns. So you can uh, associate a drip marketing campaign to a group. And so, for example, I can assign an action plan. We'll go ahead and like, select the action plan. Again, I get to see the names uh, and how many action plans there are. And I get to see the schedule. I'm going to go ahead and assign this to that group. And now what I've just done is everybody that's already in this group, they're going to begin receiving this drip marketing campaigns uh, system here. Huh, didn't say there. That's interesting. Uh, let me take a look at that one more time. Let's try that one here and assign that. Maybe I clicked the wrong button there. Uh, oh, yeah, there it goes. Maybe it just needed to update. Uh, so anyhow... What's going to happen is this drip marketing campaign, or both of these now, we're going to start going out to everybody in the group. But as you add new people to the group, this drip marketing campaign will be added to them as well. So, and then it will run on that schedule. So, as people are added to the group, this will automatically be assigned. So, you don't need to go in and 
an ad, a drip marketing campaign to everybody as they come in and things like that. So try to automate this as much as possible, make it easy for you as possible. Uh, calendar events, same thing. We can go ahead and add a calendar event to the group, handle similar to the way the action plans are handled here in the system as well. Uh, again, back on the left navigation, the other thing I wanted to show you real quick here is our import module. So you can actually import leads from other CRM uh, or other uh, sources if you'd like to. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and scroll all the way to the bottom. Let's start at the bottom of the page. So the best place to start is at the, at the end here. Um, I'm going to click on this link here that says click here to see a sample lead import file. And what this is going to do is it's going to open up actually downloads here, here it is. It downloads to my computer is an Excel spreadsheet. I'm gonna go ahead and open that. It's actually opened on my other monitor. So let's bring this over. But essentially you can use this spreadsheet to import your leads and clients into the system. Uh, and again, we just wanna make sure everybody gets into the appropriate column here. And then uh, once you get this all set up, you can go ahead and save this to your computer. Let's see, you can add in all kinds of information here. Save this file to your computer and then use this to actually upload and import people into the system. Uh, we do need a first name, last name, and a phone number or a first name, last name, and an email address to actually create the record. So we'll need at least three of those four pieces of information uh, to, create the, uh, to create the lead. Um, but all right, so once you get the file created, you can go ahead and then uh, uh, import that into the system. So let me go back to the top here. And the source will show as manual import, but you can choose another source if you choose to. You can decide what group they should go into, if they should go into a group at all. Uh, and then once you do, uh, or once you're ready, go ahead and click the browse to navigate to your file to upload and then, uh, or to import and then select it. And of course, then just click the import button and that will begin the process to bring everybody into the system. So, so yes, importing leads and clients uh, into the system is supported here. And that's kind of a high level view of what that looks like. Uh, before we take a look at the mobile app, I did want to point out a couple of things here in the CRM. Uh, the desktop version of the CRM is under our marketing section. Uh, you do have the ability to create flyers. We do pull uh, listing data from the MLS, of course, and, uh, and populate that information here in the system so that when you create a new flyer, you can just create a new flyer, you can select a template, but when you get to the point where you select your listing, your listings will be listed out there. So as long as you're the primary listing agent, you can just go ahead and select the radio button and all of that listing information will populate onto the flyer automatically. My account's not a real agent and I don't have an MLS ID, so I don't really have an example to show you here, but uh, just know that we do uh, populate all of that information in from the MLS. Uh, so easy way to create flyers there. And then you'll also notice that we have our action plan manager and these are the different drip marketing campaign messages or plans that, that are available to you as the agents as well. And there is the option to edit and manage these on your own if you wanted to. That's uh, that's gonna be a different call though, but uh, they are here and they are available. All right. Uh, all right, let's go ahead and take a look at the mobile app. And so once you get it downloaded to your phone, what I'm going to share here, actually, let me set this up to try to be a little cleaner. There we go. Get rid of the background distraction there. But essentially what we're looking at here will be uh, on your phone. I'm going to do it here on my computer um, just because we're here and it'd be a little easier to do. But of course, you're just going to go ahead and log in. I'm just going to go ahead and, and type in my login information and my password. Oops, I already saved my password and then uh, touch the login button, and that will get you logged into the app. And so once you get logged into the app, that also makes certain connections on our side, <clears throat> excuse me, certain connections on our side that will also connect your phone to uh, push notifications so that you, when you do receive a lead or if there is a reminder or something like that that needs to come in, uh, we can actually push that notification to your phone where you'll get it on the, uh, on the, on the home screen, or on the uh, the dashboard screen, and uh, and like for example, I'm on an Android, or I use an Android, so there's a drawer at the top that I can pull down, and I can see my notifications there as well. 
Um, so it, it's, you know, try to make that communication as easy as possible. So once you get logged in, you're here on the, what we call the dashboard. And uh, of course, a little information here at the top, but the primary feature here on the dashboard is going to be the to-dos module. So I can see that I have a couple of to-dos that are overdue. These are the same ones that we were looking at on the dashboard of the uh, desktop version of the CRM. And then I see that I have one that's upcoming uh, here in a couple of days, so I can see what's coming up, if there's anything due today or tomorrow or upcoming. So a quick view of what's going on here. Of course, I can touch on any of these. And that will take me into the to-do where I can see who is for, I can see their contact information, phone number and email address, assuming that those are in the system, the date of the to-do, and then at the bottom, I can either cancel any changes here, I can delete this to-do, I can complete it, uh, or I can make some changes and then save it again. In this case, I'm just going to go ahead and complete it, and it will remove it from the list here so that I know that that's done. That will also be marked as complete uh, on the client record as well. Uh, all right, on the top right, uh, I'm sorry, the top left-hand corner, we have our, what we call our hamburger menu. It's the three lines here in the top left corner. If we touch on that, that's going to open up uh, our flyout menu, or we can see the different areas within the mobile app uh, that are available. So contacts is going to be just that. It's going to be a list of all the people that are in your system that you can then touch on and go into their detail pages and so forth. Uh, so we can touch on uh, Joe here, and that takes us into his where we can uh, call, email, or text. I can see other contact details regarding his account as well. I can see uh, any to-dos that are coming up for this particular person, group assignments. I can see notes, uh, action plans. Again, I can see the action plans or drip marketing campaigns that they're associated to. If they have any saved properties or saved searches here. So um, and that's kind of what the, the detail page of a contact record looks like. Let's go back to our menu. Uh, and the next item here is sync contacts. So uh, this is actually a handy tool because it allows you to uh, import people from your phone's contact list into the CRM. So the idea is that you're uh, you know, standing in line at Starbucks or you're at a party and you meet somebody and they say, oh yeah, I'm gonna sell my house next month. And then you can get a listing agreement out of it. And so you quickly add their information to your phone. And uh, um, now you can use this tool, this sync contacts tool, to uh, import them automatically into the system. So clicking on next here would open up your uh, uh, contact list from your phone. And uh, you can then select the different people in your list and import them into the CRM. They'll show here in the mobile app. And again, it's, it's all tied to the same database as the, dash or the desktop version of the CRM, so it'll show in both places. And because I'm on a computer here, I don't have a contact list associated to this, um, but just know that it does open your, your uh, contact list on your phone. Uh, quick email, so quick email is just that. You can quickly send an email. Anybody who uh, is in your system, you can just go ahead and click on the plus sign here on the right, and you can select them from a list and add them in, or you can just type in their email address here. If you happen to know it, uh, you can just type their email address here in the two line, in the CC, the BCC, create a subject line, and then you can go ahead and add in a message here uh, in, the, in the body of the, the email here. We also will add in your contact information, so your name and contact information. Again, trying to make it as easy as possible for you to uh, keep your branding and your name out there in front of your, your leads and clients. Uh, and so forth. So anyhow, once you get all this information set out or set up, just click on the send button at the bottom and that will send that quick email out to that person. But agents do have the option if they have a lead and they actually are working in a team or a group uh, and they want to have another group member manager take care of that lead, the agent can reassign that lead from the contact detail page okay, of, um, of the desktop version of the CRM. So they can log into the desktop, go to the client and reassign it, select the person who should be reassigned to and then uh, and assign that out to that person. Uh, all right, so back here on my screen here on my phone, my virtual phone, uh, we took a look at, uh, at the, the dashboard contacts, sync contacts at quick email. So now let's take a quick look at action plans. Again, drip marketing campaigns. Touching this will show you the different action plans that are available. 
uh, and uh, you can click on an action plan to see that there are eight activities. Activities is the name for each individual email message that is sent out. So we have a collection of activities, emails, in collated into an action plan. And so that's kind of how that terminology works out. But I can see I have eight messages that will go out with this uh, plan. So I can touch on the activities and I can see each one. Again, I can see the names, I can see the day offset or the schedule for these when they'll be sent out. And you'll also notice there's a preview. I can touch on the preview and that will open up the preview window. Of course, it uh, looks like my network might be running a little slow here, but uh, it will show you a preview, at least on my mobile version or on my, my phone. It will show me the mobile version of what that message looks like. Uh, and so you can kind of go through and preview them from your phone if you choose to do so. Um, and just know that the mobile app is really a lightweight tool, uh, productivity tool, allowing you primarily to receive, accept, contact, and follow up and document what's going on with your leads. So a lot of the administrative type things that uh, you can do on the dash, uh, I'm sorry, on the desktop version of the CRM are not necessarily available here in the, in the mobile app. So again, we want to make the mobile app kind of lightweight, easy to use, and, uh, and make it more for a productivity tool, not so much of a management tool. And uh, so as far as editing or managing some of the action plans, you can do assignments here and you can preview them, but uh, uh, other tasks like editing them would be done on the dashboard. Uh, I'm sorry, on the desktop version of the, of the app. Uh, all right, so here back in the action plan, so we looked at the activities. You can also see the participants or those who are associated to it. I can touch on that, and I can, again, see who's, who's here, who's associated to them. I can touch the pencil icon to add other people to this plan if I wanted to and so forth. So, again, just try to make it as easy as possible to kind of touch through the different screens here and, and get to what you need to do here. Uh, leads is, the, uh, is an area where you can actually see leads in the system. You'll notice that there's a bell icon here in the top right-hand corner of your app as well. It's the same thing. Clicking on the bell icon or clicking on leads from the flyout menu will take you to the same place. And the idea here is that on the leads page, these are all people who need some sort of follow-up action or some action item that needs uh, to be cleaned up. So the goal here when you're using the app is to keep this page clear or empty. So it's always a good place to come in and make sure that there isn't somebody who's, uh, who's missing some kind of follow-up action. You can touch on their names and uh, uh, you know, follow up with that. In fact, we'll come back to this here in just a moment when I show you the lead follow up workflow. But there's also a to do's tab here. And again, we can see the to do's here and just a convenient place. It's the same to do's module that shows on the dashboard of the mobile app as well. So it's just another way to access this information. So the next item here is our lead ingestion. So again, this is another way to easily get leads in, into the system here. So the idea here is that we're going to provide everybody a, a unique email address. It's basically the email address is rainmls uh, your username, in this case, charlie, at leads.rds.com. And you can use this email address as the notification address for leads from external systems. So let's say, for example, you have a Zillow account or an account at Realtor and they send you leads. You, are, you're, you currently are receiving those leads through an email notification that they send to you directly. You can actually have them send it to this email address, this rainmls charlie at leads.rds.com, and have the system automatically parse that email and then import them into the CRM. You will be notified via email and push notification through uh, the system that you have a new lead and then you can begin to follow up as if this lead came from your own listing or, or what have you, but it will come directly to you and the system will know how to how to read the email and put that information into the CRM. So it's a good way, it's an easy way uh, to uh, get leads into the system uh, quickly and easily. So this address can be used as a uh, as the as the primary to field for your notification, or it can also be included as a CC if the uh, like Zillow option gives you the option to add a two and a CC there. You can just go ahead and add it in. That way, you can still receive the lead notification you normally do, and then also have it sent to the CRM. Otherwise, if you want to add your own email address here at the bottom, you can uh, and then save this. What we'll do is when we receive the email message, we'll parse it, put it in the system, notify you, and then we'll forward that email onto the address that's here uh, in the system. You just go ahead and click on save when you enter that information there. 
let's go, go ahead and just hit the last couple of items and then we'll take a look at the lead follow-up workflow and then uh, we can end it there. So uh, again, just looking here at our menu, we've got our to-dos, that's the to-dos module that we've looked at before. And groups, again, it's just another way to access groups through the system. Uh, touching on groups, of course, shows you your list of groups. You can create your own list of groups here if you choose to, you know, again, similar to what we looked at on the desktop version of the CRM. But just again, this is how you can do it through the mobile app. And again, this is just kind of an overview. We can get into details of the specifics here uh, once we launch and get everybody live here. Uh, but what I did want to do is actually kind of show you how you can receive leads uh, and follow up with them. So I had mentioned the leads page here. Click on the bell icon. And when you receive a lead, they'll show up here in this list. So of course, you can see that I have uh, quite a few leads that are in here. One of them looks like they're seven days old. Bob Jones came in, looks like yesterday. So I'm not very good at following up with my leads. But what I can do is I can then, when I do receive a lead, they'll show here. Uh, and we do track how long it takes for you to actually uh, begin that follow-up uh, with them to kind of help provide you with a little bit of feedback in terms of uh, being responsive to your leads and clients and so forth. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and click on our, our friend Bob Jones here. And that's going to take us into our lead follow-up workflow. So, of course, it's going to show us a name, contact information, and so forth. Uh, and we can also see the big green call now button. And this person had provided their phone number in a form. So we're going to put the call now button because we want to initiate that direct communication with them um, as much as possible. If they had only en entered their email address here, this would say email now. And you can click on that and it'll open up your email. You can go ahead and send them a message and, and so forth. So uh, the idea here is that we're going to call Bob and we're going to have a conversation with them and then document that information uh, here in the mobile app. So I'm just going to go ahead and touch on already contacted. Uh, that basically just skips the uh, phone call portion of it and takes us right into the first step of the lead follow-up workflow. So we want to know what happened. Did you make contact? You left a message you couldn't reach. Uh, so you can either, uh, uh, if you left a message or couldn't reach, then you can set up a to-do or a follow-up action item to follow up with them again. Let's just go ahead and say we made contact. And we want to know what type of opportunity is this. Are they buying? Are they selling? Are they prospect? Uh, so again, this is going to lead us into that uh, uh, client profile that we had looked at earlier on the desktop version, uh, where we saw where their location is and, and uh, how much are they qualified for and so forth. So in this case, let's go ahead and say they're buying. And here we go. So what did we learn? We learned that they are looking for a home in Costa Mesa in California and the zip code. I can touch in this box and I can add in other zip codes here if I chose to do so. Nine, two, six, two, seven. There we go. And I can select it from the list. I can set the price range of what they're looking for. Estimated time frame. So how soon are they looking to transact? Is it immediately? Three months, six months, you know, a year plus or so forth. You can go ahead and select one of those. Uh, are they planning to sell? Yes or no. Uh, you may be able to get a listing agreement out of this instead. Uh, are they pre-qualified? Yes or no. Uh, and if so, for how much? And we can go ahead and just put in a big number there. And then who is their lender? So we can see if we scroll down here a little bit, we can see lender and I can uh, touch in the box and we populate the box here with the more popular national brands for uh, lending institutions. However, if they are working with a local bank or a credit union or something like that, you can actually type in this lender box. Uh, I'm just going to type in local bank and select it from the list and then we'll associate that. So you do not need to use one of the, you know, touch on one of the, the national brands. So you can, you can actually customize this uh, by typing in your own bank. By virtue of typing in, we do not save it to the list. So just be aware of that. Um, so you would need to type that in for every lead who is using that particular lending institution. And then at the bottom, we have the update buying profile and continue. And that will take us into our next step where we want to know what's next. And so with this, you've received the lead, you've contacted them, had a substantive conversation with them and learned a lot about what it is that they want to do and, and about them. Uh, but we also want you to walk away with an action item, a follow-up action item to keep that momentum uh, going and lead that person to a transaction. So we want to know what's next. And so what's next is to create an action item. So is it a showing, a meeting, a to-do, uh, what have you? Let's just go ahead and stick with the showing theme here. We can then touch on the date of when that showing should happen. 
we can select a category. I'm going to scroll down here a little bit. And the category, uh, again, can be a follow-up, a to-do, send a CMA, what have you. Just touch one from the list. Create a subject line. And we'll just say, uh, show 123 Main Street. We can set a start time and an end time and a reminder here. So we can turn on a reminder. So I can actually receive a reminder. In this case, I'll go ahead and set an hour before. But what's gonna happen is I'm gonna receive an email and a push notification on my mobile device uh, alerting me. In this case, I'll select it an hour before this uh, to-do is due. And uh, so for me personally, it kind of keeps me on task with what I need to do and things like that. So I'm personally I'm a big fan of reminders. And then you can add in notes here at the bottom. Uh, but once you get everything all set, touch on save. And the goal here is to get to this green check mark that's going to pop up here in a second that gets you to the completed uh, of the follow up, uh, lead follow up workflow. And I'm just going to go ahead and skip that uh, and bring you right back into the lead record. So you've received the lead, contacted them, had a good conversation with them, documented what it is that they're doing, and you walk away with an action item. And that follow-up workflow shouldn't take you more than, you know, less should take you less than a minute to get through it after you have that conversation with them. But again, it's it's a productivity tool that we hope that you will uh, adopt and be able to use pro, uh, uh, proactively to be able to maintain and manage and keep communication with your leads and clients. Okie dokies. What does everybody think about our new free CRM? Started off with eight, we still got six left. <laughs> All right. It. It was Very good. excited. <laughs> what were you saying, I was just saying that I liked it. I liked all the actions plan. Um, you know, I just got a CRM. <laughs> So it's like this came out at the worst timing, but the best timing. So yeah. I was um I can definitely just take from their action plans and apply it to my own. The email seems good. It seems like we would need to have like a new email for all of our marketing. That is that basically what you got from that too? Like or when would when would we get our clients to actually use the new email? Where would we put that email to um I don't I don't think it's necessarily if you want it if you wanted to share that email for it to directly input it when you share anything you could from my understanding. But um, just the same as you receive like any kind of Zillow or like if you're a premier agent with Zillow, you have a new email there and it just adds it to that particular inbox. So if you were advertising from your Zillow account, then, yeah, you would be utilizing that email. Um, it's not something that I personally would do. I would continue advertising your particular brand in your email that you have for your brand. Mm -hmm. And then you can either have it uh, imported that way or you manually import it however you want to do it. But I, that's that's totally up to you. And that's, that's just from my understanding. So the system is still new to me. Um, I personally have follow-up boss. I don't know if any of y'all have tried that CRM. It is very user-friendly as well. I think a little more user-friendly than this particular CRM. However, this one is included with our range use. So, you know, if you want to save some money and you, and you haven't been working a CRM, I definitely would advise you to go ahead and implement this one because you need to have some kind of CRM in, in order to stay relevant with your clients. Yeah, I agree. And I follow up boss too. I was thinking about taking some of their action plans and then just um, if it's good or if it's kind of like better than follow up boss and just putting it into follow up boss. Yeah, I looked at a couple of the templates and um, they're, in my personal opinion, they're very generic. I, I like follow up bosses better at the moment. Now, I am assuming that they will continue to build on that. And of course, you guys can always implement your own uh, email drips, campaigns, or whatever you want in there as well. Um, that, that's totally up to you on how you want to run your business. But uh, I wouldn't get rid of follow-up boss yet, Deja. If I were you, I would actually just kind of fish through follow-up boss, see what you'd like to like mimic into your your free one if you want to go that route to save that money 
Yeah, for sure. That's what I was planning on doing, just kind of taking the free stuff and yes. then putting it with follow-up boss because I'm familiar with it. I like it. It's way more user-friendly. Yeah, follow-up bosses is quite nice. Yeah. Um, it, if we honestly, if we get enough people within our office signed up for follow-up boss guys, we can actually get a discounted rate. Like right now, they're seventy dollars monthly. Um, so if we get enough people signed up, then we can get a, a discounted rate for our office by us pulling together like that. So everybody get follow-up boss. That's what I'm hearing. That's that's what I that's what I that's what I, that's, what I, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> I've been looking into it. I was getting ready to do the 14 day trial. Um, mm -hmm. it, it looks like it is one of the best ones I've seen. Yeah. Um, Kara uses it. I think Chrissy just signed up for it. Uh, Rebecca uses it. Um, I've been dabbling with it. There's different plans that they offer and you can actually have a dialer included so that you could just, you know, dial out directly from your computer if you wanted to. Um, in addition to that, um, they just have a lot of templates and it, and it is very user friendly. Not that this one is, is not user friendly, but like when you're used to using something that is very friendly, then you see this one, it just seems a little bit more, you know, DOS, <laughs> gives me DOS vibes. But um, if you're not using a CRM, you guys really should be. I mean, if you're not going to personally reach out to your clients on a regular basis, you can set up an email drip and then you can also set up reminders because once your database starts growing, it's going to be really, really hard for you guys to remember who to check up on. And the last thing you want to do is find out that, you know, somebody that you thought you were close with bought and sold with somebody else. And, and it was because you were out of sight, out of mind. It had nothing to do with anything else. So don't do that, you know, really control your business, be active in your business, and you will reap the benefits of that no matter what kind of market you're in, just because you're staying relevant. Make senses? Yep. Yep. Yes. All right. So I can email that video to anybody that wants it, or you can pull it from the the site for it so who wants that e this video sent to them or are you guys good i'll take it i'll send it all right trey i'll send it to you yeah you send it to me too <laughs> okay so trey and deja yes okay does anybody have any other questions or oh, oh look we got some stuff yeah elena oh. said she wanted it emailed all right Andrew says he can get it from the site. That's awesome. Um, Elena, can you put your, y'all put y'all's email addresses in the chat box just so I make sure I don't miss anybody. For me, please. Um, but I'm not gonna bother you guys much more uh, today. I think this was a lot of information to take in by itself. Um, there are, I will say this, there is, a great email drip campaign that Thomasina actually gives out for free. Um, I actually have a copy of that as well. If y'all want it, I mean, it's templates, right? So it's like, it will cover you for the year. It's way more than you actually need. If y'all are interested in it, I will email that to you guys as well. Yes, please. Yeah, everybody wants free information. Mm -hmm. All right, good deal. Um, does anybody have any questions for me, whether it has to do with this CRM, growing your business, marketing, like how are you guys going about with getting business in this type of market? Are you paying for leads? Are you looking for the free route? Cool, everybody's working hard for the money. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, <coughs> I've been working my sphere. Okay. And it's been okay so far. I have noticed that everybody freaked out when the rates went up, of course. Yeah. Then all of my people I'm nurturing kind of peaked interest and yeah. now they've kind of slumped back under the hole. Yeah. So I don't know if anybody else is struggling with that. 
Um, yeah, but that's, that's been a big struggle the last month. Yeah, that's definitely what's going on. And my best advice that I can give, like still continue to nurture your people, but they are no longer your A people. They are no longer hot in the market. They have moved down to maybe B or C. Um, but I, I really want you guys to make sure that y'all are, are attempting to get new business. Because right now, when you're dealing with the people who were shopping with a lower interest rate, and now all of a sudden the interest rate hike has scared them, and then you have doom and gloom all over the internet, the market's going to crash, blah, 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 blah. It's going to be really hard to convince those individuals otherwise. So I'm not saying to drop them. I'm just saying that they should not be your primary focus at this time just because they're having to, to recover from the harshness of what's going on with the market. So, you know, just kind of move them down and then work on getting new people, new leads. Um, when it comes to working your sphere of influence, you, you can work your sphere of influence. You always want to work your sphere of influence, but you don't want that to be your only stream of prospecting simply because how are you going to meet new people? Unless you got, unless you have social butterflies within your sphere of influence who are meeting new people for you. But my sphere of influence is a lot like me and we're all pretty introverted. So <laughs> if y'all have ever seen a bunch of introverts out of an event, we're all in the corners. <laughs> yeah, talking. I mean, a lot of my sphere comes from our, our other business too. Okay. So it is constantly evolving. I work in the store once a week. So I'm meeting okay. new people. I'm getting my cards are everywhere. You walk in that store, you will see me everywhere. <laughs> That's fantastic. Um, yeah. So I, I'm doing it that way. Um, it's just been very hard as a new agent. None of these lead services want to bring us in, right? We're all struggling with that. So it's hard to pay for the leads, even if I wanted to, because um, there's just no spots open. Uh, Tanya, let me try a trick because I believe you are working one of my Ojo leads. Um, yep. Let yep. me try a trick by letting them know that I gave it to you because I'm, I bet, I bet they will put you in the system at that point to make sure they get paid. So let me try. Yeah, I, and if I, I have to do that trick it. with Thank everybody you. to get y'all in Ojo, that's exactly what I'll do. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate $500,000 lead, but I'll give you one of the other ones. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a start, you know, I'm, I'm not yeah. lucky here. Money is money and I'm going to go after it. Um, but it, it's just been a struggle with not just OJ, with all of them. They're all the same. So yeah. it, it's kind of frustrating to get your foot in when nobody wants to let you in and give you a chance, you know? Yeah. So I, I even saw on, um, so Op City never really worked out for me. They wanted everybody to stop, start at the bottom of the barrel with renters and investors and all of that jazz. And, and that might be fine for some people, but that was not the book of business that I had going for myself at the time. So I was not going to take a step back. So I just kind of like let Op City do its own thing. It didn't really attempt to work it. Um, but Ojo has been pretty fruitful for me. But everybody is struggling right now because like I even saw somebody post on the dumpster fire pages on Facebook about you know their $5,200 monthly ad spend that they were investing in Zillow and now they are pulling it because Zillow is no longer offering a return on it and and so we know it's not just you know these ones that you pay on the back end like it is a little bit a bigger of a picture so I don't want you guys to get discouraged as far as that goes, but I do want y'all to kind of go back to the basics before these little, these lead ads existed, you know, like they're, they're benefiting off of what people are searching on the internet, right? So what you should be investing your money towards if you were going to pay up front or your time and effort should be towards what's catching these people's attention. Like your Google business page, like you have HomeSnap that's like managing it for you and trying to put it out there, but you guys should also be attempting to put it out there. The more reviews you get, the more your page is going to be shared and more upfront your page is going to be. And it doesn't necessarily mean the people with the most reviews are at the top because when you like Google 
our office, you will see agents at the top that aren't, aren't even the one with the most reviews either. And if you're a newer agent, you don't necessarily have clients, but you are somebody who somebody can write it a review about. It does not have to be specific towards a property. It could be specific towards your integrity or how you run a business. So don't feel discouraged if you don't have reviews from, you don't have clients to get reviews from, get other, your sphere of influence to actually write your review on how you are as, as a business person or as somebody with integrity. Um, other things that you guys can do is, you know, really leverage your social media platform. Like we have listings that pop up in our office that y'all can be sharing on Facebook and creating little Facebook ads. And then you can share those for free in different trash and treasure sites. Yes, it's a little bit of extra clicking, but I've actually gotten business that way to where I was able to show that house. Not every trash and treasure site is going to want you doing that. So you might get kicked out of a few. But if you, if you, the more you share it, the algorithm picks up for Facebook and the more it gets pushed out as well. So I've had, I've paid an ad through Facebook and I've also shared it manually and I've had it being shared manually, give me more views than the paid out. And then the paid out, you know, may not be necessarily getting to the people that you want it to get to either. So these are just things that I've done in the beginning before I was able to afford to purchase leads. And I, I still don't purchase leads at this time. I dropped Zillow a year and a half, two years ago when they started screwing over agents. But I pay, I do pay Ojo on the back end, but like, don't get discouraged just because they're, they're full. Let's figure out a way to get you in there. Can we put our face and branding on inside the office listings with the listing agent info too? You can, what you can do, Deja, is you can share our listing office listing. You can share our office's listings, right? You don't have to market the listing agent in order to do that. You have permission to actually advertise it. So what you can do is pull the pictures from the MLS, give a little bit of blurb in the context, and then have a link for it to your home snap. So like you will pull it up on your home snap page, plug in the address, highlight that, and then post it to your Facebook thing. That way you you can actually create a little ad. It drives them directly to your home snap. So you're able to capture that lead and you're in full compliance with advertising it. It's just when y'all advertise a different brokerages listing that you have to include the listing agent, but not within our office. Oh, you're not claiming helpful. the listing. You're just you're just advertising the listing. Okay, that's that was good. Thinking. <laughs> good. That was a good question because I wanted clarification on that as well. I usually do say like listed by whoever. Yeah. Um, just as a courtesy, you know, it's their listing. You know, it'd be listed by Holly. <laughs> yeah, don't, um, as much as the listing agent would love that free advertisement, don't do that because they're going to go directly to the listing agent. Yeah, and that, that's what that clarification was good for because that's kind of how I felt about it. You know, it, it's yeah. a good thing, but at the same time, I don't want it to not. But, it, you know, the, the flip side is you don't want to act like it's yours, <laughs> but I want people to reach out to me you know. Yeah. So. so you just be careful with your verbiage at that point. You know, you're not going to sit there and say, hey, check out my new listing. You're going to sit there and say, check out this new listing or who wants to come see this with me or who wants to go see it this weekend. Like you're not claiming the listing at all. And when you, when it drives them back to your, to your home snap page, when they click on the link, they're going to see that it's not listed by you. Nowhere is it advertising you as a listing agent, but they are advertising you as the person to contact to get more information, which is what you want. Right. Right. But no, the only time that you, and you have to have permission from Thomasina and the listing agent of the other firm before you can actually advertise something from a different office. Now, what I've done, like I have friends in real estate that aren't necessarily in our office. If they create a post on social media and I think it's a great house, I will just share that post. So it, it has their contact, you know, it's still giving representation to them. I'm not taking anything from them. Um, but even then, like those are few and far apart. Like I'll just typically just like it and then like leave it at that. Any That's other questions? Very helpful. Thank you, Holly. Good, good. 
Is everybody familiar with how to create a post or an ad on Facebook? Yes. Can yes. you repeat that question, Holly? Is everybody familiar with how to create a post or an ad on Facebook? I'm familiar with it, but I was wondering if you can go into detail on how to actually post or target audiences that's out of state. Um, okay, so I'm going to save that one for a different day because I got to re-familiarize myself with it, but it's under the meta business suite. And when you're creating the actual ad is when you're actually changing your target area. So if you're creating a post, your post is going to kind of go out to your friends and wherever you share it to. But when you're creating an ad, there's a drop down menu when it talks about who you want that to go to, where you could change the, the age dynamic and the location, because usually it's like a radius out from where you are. Um, I would have to go in there and play around with it to see if you could change it to like a completely different state or something along those lines. Holly, just so you know, you can, um, you can also target the ads even more specifically, um, like down to, you know, jobs, like if they put where, who they're employed, like military, you nice. know, you can actually target it to specific groups of people. So I don't know, Deja, I can, can also in the meta. Things. I'm sorry, what? I said, I can, I can show you a couple of things next time I see you in the office if you want. Yeah, that'd be really good. Thank you. Because I want to target the military, especially militaries out of mm -hmm. state and in state, you know? Yeah. Cool. All right. Well, it sounds like we're going to have Tanya teach us a class on how to really tweet those ads for Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> it's only because I do it for the other business that I know this kind of stuff. Because I had to target, you know, specifically Apple users or yeah. Mac users. Like, it, it gets down, down to the nitty gritty when you dig in it a little bit. But if, nice. I will tell you, if you target it too much, you're limiting yourself too much. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a good thing and a bad thing at the same time. Yeah. Okay. All right, guys. Well, that's pretty much going to wrap up the class. So I'll get everybody's email address. I will send y'all the link to this video as well as the uh, email templates that I have of Thomasina so that y'all can be awesome sauce all by yourself. And if y'all have any questions or anything along those lines, just let me know. Other than that, have a happy day. Thank you. Too. Thank you. All right, bye. Thank bye. You. Most. Most. Realty. Trey, bro. Thank you.